They banished him from the party for being weak but he turns out to be the strongest knight after saving a girl. Our story starts with Red who was an excellent knight in the hero's party and saved the world from the demon lord. He was the brother of the hero named Rudy, and her most trusted advisor which pissed Ares the magician so he told Red that he was useless without his legendary great sword and could not even break an ordinary barrier. Ray is a snowflake and leaves the hero's party, adopts a fake name and comes to Zoltan, a boring village. Here, he lives a slow and peaceful life as a D-rank adventurer and herb collector, who dreams of opening his own pharmacy one day. To keep his identity a secret, he pretends to be a weakling and lives in a small rented room. One day, as Red is collecting herbs in the forest, an owlbear attacks him, but he dodges the attack and decides not to kill it since it is above his pay scale. He returns to the village to find a group of adventurers led by an arrogant B-rank adventurer named Albert, who first insults Red and then throws a fit when he refuses to work under him. Later, Red is calculating how long he has to work before he can build his house when someone violently knocks at the door. It is Gaunce, the elf carpenter, who tells Red that his son is suffering from a deadly fever and the doctor does not have the medicine to cure him. Gaunce begs Red to save his son by finding the medicinal herb, and he accepts his request not as an adventurer but as a friend. He boosts his speed with various agility skills and runs through the town to arrive at the forest. However, when he reaches the area where the herbs grow, he finds that Albert and his party were hunting the owlbear, and they had set the forest on fire because of their reckless fire magic. Red curses them, but still rushes into the burning forest and collects the required herbs. Suddenly, the wounded owlbear attacks him, and Red slays it in one hit and then runs away before being found. Thanks to his medicine, the boy is healed, and Gaunce thanks Red repeatedly and asks how he can ever repay him for that. Red tells him to build his shop and house free of any labor charges, and the elf carpenter is happy to accept this request. Four months later, Red's shop is finally complete, and he only paid for the raw materials. He throws a party for his friends, who include half the town's population, and makes a toast to fulfilling his dream of opening his pharmacy. One rainy day, Red is sulking in his shop about the lack of customers when someone enters. He excitedly welcomes the guest, but as he sees her face, he is too stunned to speak. The beautiful curvy girl called Rit is very happy to see him, and she knows his real name as they are old friends. Red and Rit sit down for tea, and she informs him that she works as a B-rank adventurer here, but somehow they have never met each other before. Rit was not an ordinary adventurer, but the second princess of the military nation Lagervia, and Red is curious about what she is doing in a remote place like Zoltan. She replies that many people wanted her to become the next ruler instead of her brother, so she ditched the country, and her responsibility to live in peace here. Rit then asks Red why he changed his name, and he replies that he was also hiding his identity, and he couldn't think of a fake name, so he decided to copy her name. Rit blushes on hearing this and tries to riz up Red with her bashful act, before asking why he was here. He tells her the story of getting kicked out, and she gets angry on his behalf. However, he calms her down using herbal tea, and Rit praises him, calling him husband material, and he blushes. Red goes down the nostalgia rabbit hole. He first met Rit several years ago when the hero's party was in Lagervia. They were in an inn, where Rit taught a lesson to a scoundrel who was trying to get too frank with her. After that, she walked to the hero's party and smugly told them that Lagervia doesn't need anyone's help to save their kingdom. She was cheeky and never honest about her feelings back then, but slowly got closer to Red. One night, she visited their camp and told Red about the recent disappearances of villagers near the forests. Red deduced that the Demon Lord's army was nearby and planning to attack Lagervia. He offered the hero's party's help in fighting against them, but Rit was too proud to accept their help. However, she soon had to swallow her pride when the demon army overwhelmed their forces and surrounded the capital from all sides. The general of Logervia planned to launch a sneak attack on the enemy's food reserves to weaken them and asked the hero's party to act as decoys by fighting on the front lines. Rit went with the general to steal the food, but her army was ambushed by demons, and everyone except her was killed. That wasn't the worst news, as the general announced that he was the demon Shisenden, the leader of the demon army and had eaten this human to take his form. Rit was cornered and pinned down, but then Red came to her rescue, as he had sensed something amiss with the plan. He helped Rit get up, and the general transformed into the six-armed Asura demon, Shisenden. Red and Rit fought him to buy time till hero Rudy arrived. She quickly chopped off all the demon's arms and then stabbed it through the heart. As Rudy stared coldly at Rit, she turned towards her dead comrades, and their faces left her with deep trauma, and she gave up on fighting. Red visited to comfort her later, and she told him that she was too scared to lose anyone again. 
She started crying and blaming herself for the deaths of her comrades, but Red called her the hero of Lagervia, and declared that without her leading her country, they wouldn't have the will to fight. He asked her to stand up and fight beside the hero's party and save her country, and she joined the battle again and emerged victorious. After Red is done reminiscing about the past, Rit tells him that she wants to work at his shop. Red is nervous and tries to turn her down since hiring a B-rank adventurer would be a costly affair. However, Rid is willing to retire as an adventurer and look after his shop while he is collecting herbs. Red sweats as he wonders what he should do, but ultimately allows her to join him. They have dinner after that, and Rit finds it delicious and says that she will get to eat such tasty meals every day. She babbles on about how she wants a bathtub big enough for two and a new bed too. Red remarks that she sounds like she is planning to move in, and Rit casually says that she was indeed going to move in right away. It takes Red a long moment of silence to process everything, but the shocking realization hits him eventually. The next morning, Red wakes up on the floor in his own bedroom, since Rit took his bed. He sees her tempting curves and immediately rushes to the bathroom. He prepares breakfast by the time Rit wakes up, and they discuss how they have a busy day ahead. First, they go to a furniture shop owned by a goblin called Storm, who is stunned to learn that Rit, the heartthrob of the town, is moving up with Red. Rit wants to buy a double bed to accommodate both of them, and she wants it to be strong enough to withstand some intense exercise. But Red is a wimp and gets too shy at the thought of it. Rit stores everything except the bed in her item box and then leaves the shop with Red. On the way, they see the elf boy, Tonta, getting beaten by a bully. Red rushes to save him, and the bully throws a stone at him with great force. However, Red blocks it, and the boy runs away. He helps Tonta up and finds that his friend Al was injured by the bully earlier. Rit also comes there, and Tonta can't believe that Red pulled such a baddie. He patches the injured Al, who says that the bully Ademi was their friend but recently, he was getting quite violent. Red realizes that it was because his blessing has awakened recently, and it is not uncommon for blessings to change someone's personality. Ademi's blessings seem to be bar brawler, which means he can use anything as a weapon, just like John Wick. On top of that, he was a natural when it came to fighting, and that made him over-aggressive. Al is terrified of learning this, and he doesn't want to get a blessing so that he does not become like him. Rit comforts the boy because her blessing, Spirit Scout, can help her reach other people's souls and also allow her to talk to spirits. Compared to her, Red doesn't even want to think about his pathetic blessing called the Guide. After that, Red and Rit go to the medical council to get approval for their new painkiller, but the man responsible for approving medicines throws a fit and kicks them out, claiming that he is busy. Rit pulls some strings and arranges a meeting with the chairman of the council, who informs them that the bald man approved a new drug one month ago, but now it is being misused as a narcotic, so they are facing a lot of backlash. However, since it is the request of a B-rank adventurer, he personally approves the medicine. Red and Rit return home, but they think that medicines take a long time to get popular, so he needs something that will be an instant hit like those trendy TikTok hacks. Later, as Rit compliments Red's cooking and suggests that he serve food with medicines, he gets an idea and bakes cookies containing medicine to hide their bitter taste and make them more appealing. The cookies come out nice, and the next day, Rit acts like a salesgirl and gives everyone free samples. This attracts a huge crowd, and people line up to buy the medicinal cookies, and Red is out of stock before noon. He is really happy because of this success, so he lifts and swings Rit, crediting this success to Lady Luck. As the days pass, Red and Rit gradually enter a normal life as roommates. They do their chores together, and Red still cannot believe his luck that brought Rit to him. Anyone who comes to their shop and learns about them living together is shocked out of their minds, and one adventurer girl runs away crying because she had a huge crush on Red. Later, Rit tells Red that she wants to drink mead, a honey-based liquor. She does not tell him why she was suddenly in the mood to drink and runs to buy some. Meanwhile, Red is preparing some medicines when Albert comes to his shop. He claims that he is not here to buy stupid medicines and confronts Red about whether he killed the owlbear. When Albert and his party found the owlbear, they found a rough but deep slice on its body. That time, Albert took the credit for killing it, but he suspects that it was Red who killed it. Red replies that a mere D-rank like him cannot do that, and Albert gets furious as he keeps on acting like an idiot. He points his sword towards Red, who pretends to be afraid and falls down. However, Rit returns just then, and seeing Albert threaten Red, she attacks him and kicks him to the wall. Red somehow stops her from murdering him, and she lets him run away this time with just a warning. 
Rit is still angry, and Red tells her to calm down since he was never in any real danger, and would have dealt with Albert if necessary. He has caught the bottle of mead she tossed when she rushed in to save him, and they drink it while having dinner. Rit toasts to their new life and thinks that they have everything except a bathtub, and she wants it to be big enough for two of them. Since it will take some time, Red takes her to the local sauna, where he ends up in an endurance competition with Gaunce and Storm. Gaunce faints first and has to be carried out, and Storm remarks that the sauna looks quite empty. The old owner replies that a new sauna has been opened in the town recently, and he cannot compete with the power of capitalism. He has lost all hope to survive in this business, but his loyal customers cheer him up. Later, Rit, Tanta, and now, the wife of Gaunce, are discussing how they can attract customers to the sauna when Red brings tea infused with aromatic herbs. That gives them an idea. And the next day, they carry a bag of herbs to the sauna shop and tell the owner about steam therapy using the herbs. They try it out, and it smells nice and refreshing. And the old man thanks Red for giving his dying business a lifeline. The steam therapy boosts his business, and customers flock to his shop. When Red and Rit return home in the evening, she suddenly starts talking about the real reason she wanted to drink mead. She explains that in Lagervia, newlywed couples get a mandatory month-long honeymoon, where they drink mead and spend time with each other, and she just wanted to recreate that. Red is swept off his feet metaphorically, as this was the first time Rit had confessed her feelings clearly, and they happily return home. The next day, as they are setting up shop, a group of influential people visit the shop. Red goes outside to meet them, and they introduce themselves as officers from the Adventurers Guild who want to talk to Rit. Red tells them to wait till the shop opens, and once inside, Rit wants to make the people outside wait as long as possible. When she finally goes outside after some time, a representative of the Thieves Guild enters the shop to talk to Red. He offers him an elven coin, whose value is 1,000 gold coins, and asks him to sever all his ties with Rit in exchange for it. Red replies that Rit is priceless for him, and he will not leave her for all the money in the world, and his answer compels the negotiator to return. Outside, Rit also tells the guild officials that she plans to spend her entire life with Red and that she will not return to adventuring at any cost. She comes back inside and blushes because Red heard everything she said. He asks for her hand and then gifts her a bracelet with an amber stone, claiming that it was their engagement band. They blush like a couple of teenagers experiencing love for the first time, and Rit recalls how she once thought that they could never be together. In the past, when Lojavia was struggling against the Demon Lord's army, they decided to seek help from neighboring countries. For that, Red suggested that they pass through the bewitching woods since humans and demons cannot navigate through them but he has an elf friend who can guide them. They went to the village of elves, where the thick elf called Yerindala immediately rushed to hug Red. Rit was jealous of how the elf was clinging to him, and seeing how comfortable he was with her made her even more insecure. It was decided that Rudy, Ares, and Rit would accompany Red and Yerindala through the bewitching woods. There, Rudy and the elf girl noticed the look of jealousy on Rit's face, and she pulled her aside for some girl's talk. She told Rit that her love for Red was clear to everyone, but she should try to express it clearly instead of playing hard to get. Yerindala said that she has no romantic feelings for Red, as humans are short-lived and falling in love with them only brings heartbreak and eternal sorrows to elves like her. She claimed Red as her human best friend, and she requested that Rit keep him happy by staying by his side and supporting him whenever he feels weak. After that, they resumed their journey but found demon scouts waiting for them at the other end. It turned out that one of the mercenaries Ares had hired was working with demons, and he had sold them out. Red knew he had to clean up for his teammates' mess, and he volunteered to stay behind along with Yerindala to distract the enemy, and asked others to sneak behind them and get help. Rit was worried about him, but he assured her that he would be fine. Rit and Rudy went to the neighboring country and returned with reinforcement while praying for Red's safety. As soon as they reached the enemy location, Rudy charged ahead alone and killed more demons than the rest of the troops combined. Rit was astonished by the immense power of the hero and how she appeared to be a killing machine. However, when Rudy saw Red, she hugged him and apologized for leaving him behind. After that, the hero's party left Lagervia, and despite Red's invitation, Rit did not join them since she knew Rudy would not like her getting closer to her brother. Rit continued her journey alone, but fate brought her together with Red once again. Later, Rit has to make a delivery, but on the way, a bald adventurer stops her. He was the same man she once beat in her kingdom, and right now, he was working with the Thieves' Guild to deal with her. He asks her to return to adventuring or her country, but Rit walks away since she is not interested in chit-chatting. 
However, the Baldy makes the mistake of insulting Red, and Rit hits him, telling him to keep her husband's name out of his freaking mouth. The man tells her that her country is looking for her, but Rit replies that she does not plan to return. She doesn't care about her country or the race to succession, and she has everything she wants right here since Red is here. Soon after that, Red goes to the town hospital to deliver the order for medicines, but then hears a crashing sound from the neighboring house. Red and the doctor rush to the house to find a man unconscious and foaming at the mouth. He hands over a general-use antidote to the doctor before pointing out a white powder lying near the man. The doctor realizes that the powder was actually the recently approved medicine that was being used as a narcotic, and the man had overdosed. He takes the junkie to the hospital and thanks Red for suggesting the correct antidote immediately. He requests that he stock up on more medicine, and Red talks about this incident with Rit while eating lunch. She is worried about the drug making its way into the market, but Red says that it is not their role to investigate it and they should enjoy their youth. As a wise man has said, always take her swimming on the first date, and Red takes Rit to the river where they have fun splashing around. Later, as they sit down to eat, both are nervous, as neither of them had any dating experience previously. Rit admits that she was really anxious when she first came to see him, but now she always wants to be close to him, and they finally kiss. After that, they return home and get back to work. Rit has heard a few rumors about the drug, claiming that it made users feel like a new person, but she knows nothing after that. I think I need it for scientific purposes. Just then, an injured man barges into their shop, and Red gives him first aid immediately before telling Rit to take a look outside. She goes out and finds that a member of Albert's party has gone crazy, and is attacking people with an axe. He lunges at Rit like a madman as soon as he notices her. She dodges his attack and recalls that the man had the thief's blessing, and he could not swing a heavy weapon with such ease. However, she doesn't have enough time to worry about it as more crazy people wielding axes surround her. They attack her, and she takes down two of them. But one of them is about to overwhelm her when an arrow comes and hits his head. The other people are also taken down in similar fashion, and Rit notices that Albert shot them all right in the head. She confronts him about that, and he asks her to treat those who are still alive and send the bill to him later. Rit is furious at his attitude and can only control her anger by dropping her blades before she can attack him. The next day, Rit lies in Red's lap as he reads the newspaper and finds that there is no reliable information about the incident yesterday. Rit believes that the drug must have boosted the power of the people at the expense of their wits. Just then, Tonta and Al come over, and Red invites them for lunch. At lunch, Al says that his blessing touched him recently, and he is feeling anxious now. Red replies that they should call the FBI and report the blessing. However, on learning that Al has the blessing of Weapon Master, Red concludes that he is anxious since he hasn't decided on the weapon he plans to use. Al wishes that he could trade his blessing for something ordinary like Warrior, but Red tells him that a warrior is the most common and most boring blessing anyone could have. The next day, a member of Albert's party comes to apologize to Rit on her boss's behalf. She claims that he was working too hard recently, and no one with ordinary blessings was able to keep up with him. That is why he was getting impatient and temperamental. Red knows that Albert's blessing is the champion that gives him strength to overcome great obstacles and urges him to leave his mark on history. However, he was not very compatible with his wonderful blessing and failed to go big, so he came to Zoltan but now he tries his best to be the champion of this town. Soon, a storm comes, and after locking all the windows, Red makes honey milk for Rit, telling her that it was his sister's favorite when she was young. He recalls his past, when both their parents left to get milk and never returned, so they had to live as orphans. One night, there was a terrible thunderstorm, and the young Rudy was sitting quietly in one corner, and she told her brother that she was not afraid of the storm because she was the hero. Red held her hand, making excuses that he was feeling scared, and Rudy was happy that her brother relied on her. She told him that she loves him a lot, but not in the Alabama way, and asked him to promise that he would always stay with her. Red told her that he could not make such a promise because he wanted to go out and become a knight strong enough to protect her someday. Red's sweet nostalgia is disturbed when someone knocks at the door, and he opens it to see the doctor carrying the injured Al on his back. With Red's help, the doctor treats the boy and states that there were stone fragments stuck in his head wound. Soon, Al wakes up and screams that the bully boy, a demi, attacked his home with an axe and injured his parents. Red runs to his home immediately to find that his parents are alive, and that they have not been injured by an axe. The doctor also arrives shortly and helps them recover. The incident soon blows out of proportion, as a demi was the son of the town guard captain and the public wants him to take responsibility. The Demi was not seen after that attack, 
and the people also accused the town guard of hiding him. Meanwhile, Red and Rit let Al stay with them while he recovered. Even after a few days, the boy is feeling quite down, and one morning, he requests that Rit teach him to use a sword. She gives him some basic lessons and then goes to rest while drinking hot chocolate as Al keeps on practicing. Rit is worried that she might not be a good teacher, and Red replies that she will be wonderful, and they begin flirting. Please not again, I am getting jealous. Just then, Gauntz and now come running to them and inform them that the town guard took Tonto away while he was playing. And they didn't even explain themselves. Now's brother went to talk with the guards, but they didn't let him in either. Red, Rit, and Al go to the guild head and request that he ask the town guard to let them take Tonto back. He only does so because he wants to put Rit under his debt and writes them a recommendation. They take his letter to the town guard and show it to the guards, who call out their captain, Ademi's dad. He lets them in and releases Tonta, making excuses that he didn't know that his men refused to explain anything to his family. Now's brother lets it be, and refuses to press charges since the boy is unharmed. After that, Red asks the captain why he arrested Tonta, and he replies that he feels a resident of Zoltan has killed his son which is why he wanted to interrogate one of his friends. Red reminds him that his son is the culprit right now, and the captain refuses to believe Al's testimony, and accuses his parents of staging their injuries to frame his poor boy. He is adamant that his son won't attack anyone so badly, and Tonta also agrees with the captain in regards to Ademi being innocent since he recently apologized to him for beating him earlier. Ademi even claimed that he wanted to become a town guard and protect people, and he promised to not hurt anyone without reason. Everyone is confused after hearing this, and even Red cannot piece the information together. After that, the captain asks Red and Rit to stay behind for a private chat, and asks them to help the town with the problems they are facing now. First, he asks Rit to cooperate and take up the investigation even though she has retired from adventuring, and she gives him a positive answer. Red asks the captain if his son was using the narcotic flooding the market by any chance, and he gets furious as he claims that no one in his family has ever done drugs. However, when Red thinks of the similarities between this case and the one where adventurers went berserk, the captain admits that the new drugs seem to be giving people a second blessing. Soon, Red returns to the shop too, but Rit has gone out to investigate the drug. Al wanted to train with her, so Red offered to help him train instead. Using just a broom, he sweeps the boy off his feet and explains how charging recklessly at your enemy is dangerous. Al is quick to learn, and he keeps on practicing till sundown. He asks Red how he can be so good at fighting if he is only a D rank, and Red replies that he does not want to rise in rank because he is content with his current life. Al is surprised by his answer and then tells him that a few hours ago, a strange one-eyed man came to the shop and gifted him a sword. The man seemed to be working for the Thieves' Guild and gave Al a shiny red sickle, claiming it would help him become a famous weapon master in no time. That time, Al felt like training immediately, but now he expresses his doubts about whether those were his thoughts or those of his blessing. Red tells him that he should take his time to figure that out, because only by wielding his weapon can he realize his true intentions. Meanwhile, Rit catches one man with the forbidden drug and hunts him down. She takes the pouch from him as she steps on his chest, but this gives the man a very nice fanservice angle. Rit steps back because she is embarrassed, but then the man suddenly explodes from the joy of seeing the best scene of his life. Rit is taken aback by the suicide bomber, but then more of his comrades surround her. She tries to draw out her swords, but finds that they have been jammed. She kicks down one of the men, and the others try to jump her, but then a tall and muscular man grabs them by the collar and beats them unconscious in one hit. The man removes his hood and greets Rit, who recognizes him as Danan, a formidable martial artist and a member of the hero's party. After cleaning herself with the help of water spirits, Rit asks Danan what he was doing here, and he tells her that the hero ordered him to find Red. Rit is anxious that he will take him back, but Danan tells her that since Red has found a home here, he does not plan to force him away from it. Danan then takes off the hood of one of the men he just knocked down to reveal that he is actually an intermediate rank demon. Rit is shocked to see a demon in a peaceful area such as Zoltan, and Danan requests her help in investigating this incident. However, he wants her to keep him a secret from Red, and she obliges. After that, Rit returns home, exhausted from work, and immediately jumps on her husband's lap to relax. She does not tell him much about what happened outside and learns that someone from the Thieves' Guild gifted Al a sword when they were both away. Red wants her to take a look at it. Rit uses her magic to analyze the sword, and she finds that it was a nice sword. 
However, there was a tracking spell cast on it, and the location of the sword was always being transmitted to the caster. Red asks what the Thieves' Guild would gain from tracking Al, but Rit has more important things to do, like flirting with Red and acting sad about keeping Dane in a secret from him. The next day, Red and Rit take Al to a swordsmith to get his first weapon made. While Rit helps him select design and material, Red hears a commotion outside and goes to check it. A man is gathering discontented people to protest against the town guard. Red asks some adventurers what is going on, and they reply that the man inciting the crowd was paid by the leader of the Thieves' Guild to create unrest. Soon, the double bed Rit ordered arrives, and Red stands in awe as he watches her waiting for him on the bed. He jumps in and asks her to lay next to him. They do some kissing and flirting, but then notice that there is a kid in the house, so they decide to postpone their lovemaking for another day and go to sleep. The next morning, Rick covers herself from head to toe and ventures into some shady alleys, where the bald adventurer and his comrades from the Thieves' Guild surround her. They think that they are dealing with Al because of the sword with the tracker fit in it, but Rit casts away her hood to reveal that she has outsmarted them. Baldi is furious at being fooled, and he commands his men to attack her, but Rit is too agile for them and takes them all down. One man is left for last, and he thinks that he will have a nice battle with the famous adventurer Rit. She has also realized the man's true identity and told him to stop pretending to be human. He smiles and then suddenly transforms into a huge axe demon, and his fight with Rit begins. On the other hand, Al is waiting in the shop with a guard when the one-eyed man who gifted him the sword knocks again. The guard opens the door and lets him in, revealing that he was in cahoots with the Thieves' Guild. The one-eyed man says that while Rit thinks she outsmarted them, she just fell into their trap. Their real plan was to send her away so that they could kidnap the elf. Al tries to fight back, but a man quickly moves behind him and grabs his hand. The boy asks them what they want, and the one-eyed man claims that they will make him the hero of Zoltan. He takes Al to the Thieves' Guild and brings him to their leader, a hobgoblin named Big Hawk. Big Hawk starts telling Al his life story unprompted. He explains how he was born in slums and fought his way to the top. Now that he is in Zoltan, he wants to take charge of this area and change it according to his vision. For that, he needs the drug that was making everyone go crazy. It was called Devil's Blessing and was made from the hearts of Axe Demons. Big Hawk says that until now, only God gave people their blessings, but he is not satisfied with that. He believes most people also feel some sort of dissatisfaction that their life's purpose is already decided because of their blessing, and they cannot do anything about it. Big Hawk states that his blessing is Master Torturer, and even though he is a seasoned criminal, he hates his blessing, which is too cruel and disgusting. Using the Devil's Blessing, he got a second blessing, and a second chance at life, and now he wants to give that chance to everyone and take them under his control. For that, Big Hawk needs an uprising in society, and he wants Al to be his tool to start it. He commands his men to bring out a Demi, who apologizes to Al, saying that he only took the Devil's Blessing to become strong like his dad but ended up causing trouble for everyone. Outside the Big Hawk's house, a huge crowd has gathered, consisting mainly of adventurers and discontent citizens. Big Hawk takes Al to the balcony and then starts addressing the crowd. He riles them up, saying that the town guard is full of incompetent people who cannot find the culprit responsible for attacking Al's innocent family. He accuses them of hiding a demi since he is their captain's son. The crowd starts getting agitated, and then Big Hawk calls out the two town guards working for him. They lie and say that they took part in hiding a demi because the captain ordered them, but they can no longer do it. Big Hawk declares that he will start a revolution to overthrow the town guard and save Zoltan from their tyranny. For that, he asks Al to take his sword and kill a demi to start the revolution. Al does not want to do that, and Big Hawk tries to convince him that a demi was the one who tried to kill his parents. He shamelessly says that even though they gave him the drug and the axe, it was he who decided to go after his parents. Al is still not comfortable with the idea, but then Big Hawk uses his brainwashing skills to compel him to kill the boy. He takes the sword and approaches is a demi, but as soon as he sees his reflection on the blade, his brainwashing wears off, and he comes to his senses. Al strikes, but he only cuts the ropes tying a demi and not him because he does not want to hurt anyone. A demi is grateful, but then the one-eyed man shows him an axe, and he gets turned on. Big Hawk explains that because of the devil's blessings, whenever a demi sees an axe, he gets the impulse to kill. Al tries to snap him out of it, but a demi runs and grabs the axe. Big Hawk tells Al to kill him or get killed. But before anyone can move, a hooded man rushes ahead and cuts down the axe, defeating the one-eyed man in an instant. The man grabs a demi and then tells the thieves that they thought they fooled Rit, but they got fooled into thinking that by him. 
he is actually Red, who was hiding among the thieves all this time. He tells Al to grab him and then jumps down from the balcony, using his skill slow fall. Red runs away with the kids and takes them to a safe place to give Ademi an antidote to suppress his second blessing. Soon, an adventurer called Bui, who is working with Red, comes there and takes the kids, while Red stays behind to deal with the adventurers coming after them. He goes out to face Big Hawk, his men, and Albert, who has sided with them. Albert attacks Red using his martial arts techniques and demonic sword, but he parries his attacks with his cheap bronze sword. Albert realizes that Red is really strong, and all this time, he was just acting weak. Red does not pay him much attention and notices something odd with Big Hawk. He does not try to hide anything and replies that he is Belial, a contract demon borrowing the body of the Hobgoblin. He says that Big Hawk wanted to be the King of Zoltan, and in exchange for that, he let him take complete control of his body. Red engages in a little lighthearted banter with the demon, saying that since Zoltan is a very lazy place, he must have had a tough time rising to the top of the Thieves' Guild, and Belial can't agree more. To change things, he took the help of Albert, who was an outsider with great ambitions, and formed a contract with him too. Albert declares that Zoltan is such a shabby place for someone like him, which is why he made a deal with the contract demon to become more powerful so that he could play a role in defeating the demon lord one day. He claims that he won't be doing anything evil even after making a deal with demons, but Red reminds him that because he stood by the Thieves' Guild, many people have already lost their lives. Albert thinks of them as a necessary sacrifice and says that with his contract, he plans to raise an army in Zoltan and then lead them to fight the demon lord under the hero. He is quite lost in his delusion and asks Red to join him so that they can join the hero's party. He tells Red to decide if he wants to come with him and be a hero or to defeat him and be Zoltan's savior. However, Red tells him he is not going to choose either of the options, and town guards suddenly surround them. The guild head comes there and tells Albert that he is under arrest and has the right to remain silent. Albert gets frustrated and asks Red why he can't just deal with him himself and rise to glory, but Red replies that he is content running his pharmacy with Rit. Albert can't cope with this and asks him to at least kill him so that he can be remembered as something more than a petty criminal. He charges at Red, who effortlessly dodges his strike. Red strikes down with great speed and precision, and before Albert realizes it, he has lost his arm. Albert falls to his knees, crying because his plans have failed, and Red tells him that being a hero is not just about physical strength. He knows that Albert always tried his best to be Zoltan's hero, despite his flaws, but he chose the wrong way in the end. Meanwhile, Bui has taken Al and Ademi to Big Hawk's residence, where the crowd is still gathered. He makes them float up using magic, and the boys explain that whatever happened was a conspiracy fueled by the Thieves' Guild. Al says that Ademi did not hurt his family, but it was the demonic medicine that made him do it, and he warns the townspeople to stop taking that drug. Al declares that he has already forgiven Ademi, and they are back to being friends, so the people no longer have a reason to fight, and they quietly disperse. Belial or Big Hawk is arrested and put in jail when Bui pays him a visit. He Belial by his name, and the demon realizes that the man was actually the demon general Shisenden. Shisen and strangles him, telling him that it was lucky that they did not meet in front of Red, because that would have been a mess. He asks Belial why he thought of selling the Devil's Blessing and lying that it was made from an axe demon's heart. Shisen and knows the truth behind the drug and tells his old friend that if humans learn the truth that the drug can help them awaken their true potential, things will go bad for the demons very quickly. Belial declares that he is ending his contract with Big Hawk and suddenly reveals his true form as a goat. He breaks through the prison well and reaches Albert's cell, promising to give him the power to escape and join the hero's party. Albert has hit rock bottom, and he doesn't even care about that anymore, but the goat demon reminds him that he has already signed a contract with him to defeat the demon king, and he must take action for that. Albert tells him to do whatever he pleases, and the demon Belial forges a new contract. Someplace far away from Zoltan, the hero Rudy and her party are going through tough times even since Red was kicked out. At first, the group made good progress, and the magician Ares recruited a new member to replace Red. The girl introduced herself as Tiss, an assassin, and met Danan, the martial artist, and Theodora, the crusader. After that, Rudy came to see her, and despite her intimidating aura, Tiss managed to keep a poker face, even though she was very nervous to stand in front of the hero. Rudy then told her team that tomorrow they would set out to retrieve a weapon used by the previous demon king. However, that was easier said than done, and after finding no clue for a long time, the martial artist Danan started getting frustrated. He openly told Ares that he sucked at managing the group, and things were never this bad when Red was with them. 
Danon wants to leave the party to find Red, and he doesn't listen to Ares as he tries to stop him. However, when Rudy comes out, Danon starts sweating about leaving the party, but she permits him to look for her brother. Ares is shocked, as he thought the emotionless hero would not give such an order. Before leaving, Danon talks with Theodora, and they both believe that Ares held a grudge against Red for the longest time. They wonder if Ares could have killed him, but they are sure that even though Red only had common skills, he was strong enough to survive fighting anyone here. With that, Danon leaves on his journey to find him and bring him back. Rudy keeps on waiting for Danon to bring back her brother whenever they take a break. Meanwhile, Ares is getting more and more flustered as nothing goes his way, and they still have no clues about the previous Demon Lord's ultimate weapon. The new girl, Tiss, doesn't have anyone to talk to, so Theodora approaches her and explains that their party was not always a mess like this. She tells him about the hero's brother Red, who took care of all the non-combat issues perfectly, and even in battle, he was never a burden on anyone. Theodora believes that the hero and their party badly need Red back. At night, Rudy is in one corner of her tent. She doesn't need to sleep because of her powerful blessing, but the nights are getting boring and long for her without her brother to keep her company. When Red went missing, Ares informed her that he had left to scout the demon lord on his own. He made all sorts of excuses to make her believe this lie, and then he said that he would try to guide her in place of her brother now. Rudy realized that Ares was lying and that he had done something to Red, so she punched a hole through him in her rage. However, she knew that he was important for her mission, so she restored him completely before he died. But Ares started fearing Rudy from that day on. Rudy now feels like she has a hole in her heart without her brother and wishes that he would return soon. Soon, they find the location of the ruins of the previous Demon King, hidden in a desert. Ares is confident that the Demon Lord's ultimate weapon is hidden there. He claims that his Blessing Sage is the second greatest blessing after Rudy's hero, and together they will surely succeed. Tiss goes to refill their bottles before entering the ruins, and Rudy approaches her. The assassin girl nervously asks her when she sleeps since she has always seen her awake, and Rudy replies that she doesn't. Because of her blessing, she has resistance to all sorts of things, like sleep, fatigue, ailments, hunger, and even emotions. Rudy states that her blessing guides her to be a robotic hero without emotions or a need for maintenance. Only the things that could lead her to success in her mission remain with her, and everything else has been removed, and that is why she cannot go after her brother even though she misses him. Soon, Rudy and her party enter the ruins and face a gargantuan demon there. Rudy orders Tiss to find clues for weapons while they fight the demon. She recalls what her brother taught her about them. All demons share the same blessing that compels them to kill and destroy, almost as if God wants them to serve the roles of villains in this world. Rudy rushes towards the demon and attacks it, and Theodora follows her lead. Ares doesn't notice that the demon is about to attack him, and when Theodora alerts him, he wets his pants. Rudy protects him, and then, with Theodora's help, she defeats the demon. She tells Ares that she never needed to cover for her brother so much and calls him useless. Ares is still bitter and delusional, and he thinks that Red, Danon, Yurandala, Nato and the United Nations were at fault because he couldn't see the attack coming at him. Soon, Tiss returns to the group, and Ares asks her if she found the Demon Lord's weapon, and she replies that she found something better. She leads them to an underground hangar and shows them the Demon Lord's private airship. The group takes it and flies away, with Tiss acting as the pilot. She asks Rudy if there is anywhere she wants to go, and she replies that she wants to go somewhere, but shouldn't, since it would be against her duty as the hero. However, one day, Albert and Belial reach the hero's camp at night, and she learns their circumstances, which compel her to action. The next morning, Ares is stunned as he sees the airship leave without him and Theodora, but she is quite relaxed. Ares is still thinking that the hero won't be able to fight without his magic, but Theodora tells him that Rudy will manage on her own. She then goes to check the hero's tent, and besides the body of Belial, she finds the hero's badge and wonders why Rudy would leave that behind. Tiss is driving the ship at full speed towards Zoltan, and she thinks that just being the hero's driver is much better than living as an assassin. She asks Rudy why they are going to Zoltan, and she replies that she is interested in the drug Albert showed her. Last night, when Belial came to her, he tried to sell the idea that he was not like other demons. Instead of seeking war and destruction, he is one of the demons who worship the Almighty God and wish to live according to his teachings. Rudy thought he was a curious case and then asked him about the drug known as the Devil's Blessing. 
Belial explained that the drug was made from an axe demon's heart, and by using it, one could gain a second blessing. By consuming the drugs, the level of one's original blessing was lowered, and that made it easy to level up by killing weaker monsters and demons. The effects were also temporary, and when the drug wore off, the original blessing would return to a level higher than the original level. Belial told her that this could help humans win against the demon lord, but Rudy did not care about most of the explanation and the only thing she liked about it was that it could weaken one's blessing. She claims that since poisons and curses don't work on her, she wants to test them. She eats the whole pouch of the drug, which is enough to overdose an entire village, and the end results please her greatly. Now, Rudy wants a steady supply of this drug and heads to Zoltan to meet the mastermind behind it, probably someone named Heisenberg. She tells Tiss to treat her like a fellow traveler there and hide the fact that she is the hero. Tiss is nervous just standing next to her, but she accepts her request with a calm expression. Meanwhile, Red is getting bored in his shop since winter has come, and people are too lazy to leave their house. Rick comes with hot chocolate chocolate and suggests that it would be nice to have something people would like in cold weather, and she recalls that in her country, people used hand warmers. Red likes the idea, but he is worried that it might not work. Red assures him that it will be successful, and he prepares a few samples to hand out to friends, including Gaunt's, Storm, the Doctor, and people at the Guild. Everyone likes the product, and he returns home empty-handed, with his hands cold. Rit comes to meet him on the way, and after they talk about how everyone liked the product, it starts to snow. Red says that he should have kept hand warmers for themselves too, and Rit shows him that she has one. They hold it between their hands and take a walk before sitting down on a bench and flirting and kissing in the snow. A few days later, Tiss and Rudy landed in the forest near Zoltan. Tiss prepares some clothes for Rudy to seem less suspicious, but she is worried about her sword. Rudy plans to do something about it, and she hands Tiss the sword as she goes into the forest. After a few minutes, she returns with a different sword, claiming that she got it from a colony of goblins whom she healed using her ability. After that, they head to the town, but a guard is blocking the bridge, demanding people pay him money to cross it. Rudy confronts him about the unfair tax, and he tells her that it is a new hustle idea he has thought of. She refuses to pay him, and the soldier attacks her, but she sends him flying into the river with just one hand. Hand. A few minutes later, the foolish guard is warming himself up in front of a fire when Red walks through the bridge. The guard runs to him, telling him about a strong girl who smacked the shit out of him just now, and all his belongings were swept down in the river. He wants to take all the money Red has, but Red ends up punching him with all his might and sending him flying once again. Soon, Rudy enters the town, carrying a giant monster she hunted on her way, and the guard is too speechless to ask her any questions. Tiss doesn't understand how she can make the hero stand out less, so she decides to retire to an inn earlier. At night, Red returns to Zoltan just as the gate is about to close, and the guard invites him out for drinks. They go to a local food joint, where Tiss also ends up while scouting the town. Red starts talking with her and notices that she is well equipped and keeps a low profile, which means she is probably a spy or an assassin. Tiss also realizes Red's keen senses and hidden strength, and both of them think that the other is a pro. Tiss returns to their inn and informs Rudy that she has met someone who could be troublesome to deal with. She believes that Red is probably the strongest adventurer in this town, and they must not pick a fight with him. However, Rudy doesn't realize Tiss is talking about Red, and she decides that they should steer clear of him. The next day, she scouts the prison, where the alchemist who created the drug is being held captive. Rudy wonders what her brother would do to break him out of prison, and just imagining him talking to her makes her miss him a lot. Thanks to the drug, her blessing was weakened, and her emotions have returned to her, so she decides to search for him after this. At night, Rudy and Tiss sneak into the prison and go to the cell of the one-eyed man whom we will call Heisenberg from now on. Rudy demands that he make the devil's blessing for her, and he is too afraid to reject her. The next morning, Tiss wakes up to see that Rudy cannot sleep since the drug's effect has worn off. She plans to heal Heisenberg so that he can start working again and asks Tiss to find some medicine for him since she does not want to reveal her healing power. Tiss has found out about a good pharmacy and takes Rudy along with her. But as soon as Rudy enters the shop, she sees Red. Neither of them can believe they are seeing each other again, and Rudy smiles as she runs to hug her brother. Gauntz was also in the shop, and he is confused since Red never mentioned anything about his sister. He leaves them in privacy, and Tiss asks Red if it is fine to let the elf leave after he has found their secret, but Red trusts him. 
After that, Tiss introduces herself as his replacement at the hero's party. Rudy asks Red if he lives with anyone, and as soon as she learns about Rit, she is not happy. Red changes the topic and tells her the truth about how he left the party because Ares convinced him to do that. Rudy promises to teach Ares a lesson when they return, and asks Red to join the party again, saying that everyone wants him back. She explains how Yerindala left the party after him, and Danan also went off solo to locate him. Red is shocked, as he was under the impression that everything was going smoothly for Rudy's party. However, he cannot leave this town because he has found a reason to live here. Upon hearing this, Rudy declares that she will also move to this town. Both Red and Tiss are stunned upon hearing this, and then Rit returns from grocery shopping. She is also taken aback as she sees Rudy, and then Red brings tea for everyone. He asks Rudy what brings her to Zoltan, and she replies that she was looking for someone to help her defeat the demon lord. As a bonus, she also found her brother. Rit is anxious and fears that Rudy will take Red away from her, but he assures her that he does not plan to go anywhere and will stay here with her. Rit looks at Rudy for her approval, and she is also shocked to learn that she was going to stay here. After that, Rudy leaves for her inn, and Red tells her to come here whenever she wants. As Rudy leaves, she suddenly gets a stroke as the medicine wears off, and she tops herself off again. At night, Tis goes to Heisenberg and tells him that they do not plan to leave Zoltan anytime soon, and he panics because if he gets arrested this time, he will surely be executed. Tis then returns to Rudy and informs him that Heisenberg wants a fully equipped lab to make the drug, and she already has some plans for that. She has heard about some elven ruins in the nearby mountain, and she wants to set up the lab there. Tiss thinks that might not be a good idea, and then suddenly Rudy turns towards her. Tiss is terrified as the hero stretches her hand out to her pet spider, and she jumps back while drawing her blade. She feels Rudy wants to harm him, but she says that she has no intention of harming anyone and even apologizes for the misunderstanding. Tiss realizes that while everyone expected the hero to save the world, even her party members were afraid of her. She had no friends, and her limited social interactions meant that she didn't know how to approach others as well. Tiss feels bad for drawing her weapon and walks to Rudy, letting her pet her spider. The next day, Rudy tries helping out at her brother's shop, but because of her scary aura, everyone runs away. Red suggests she smile more, but she has a hard time doing that too. He then asks her to come with him so that they can see the town together. He takes her to the sauna first, where everyone remarks how cute she is, and Rudy hides behind him because she is embarrassed. As they leave the sauna, Rudy apologizes for standing out so much, and Red tells her that there is no harm in doing that and no one is going to pry into their affairs here. He pats her head, calling her his pride and joy, and Rudy wishes that this day lasts forever. Meanwhile, Ares and Theodora are traveling towards Zoltan to track the hero, and Albert acts as their guide. Ares has started showing clear signs of mental illness, but unfortunately, healing magic doesn't work on that. Albert is still a depressed bitch, and he feels like he has done nothing to help anyone. Theodora tells him that he was leading them to the hero, and that was enough. Back at Zoltan, Red has Rudy and Tiss over for dinner, and he serves them Rudy's favorite honey milk as dessert and even prepares a treat for Tiss's pet spider. Red tells Rudy to take a bath before returning to her inn, and since she is too old to take one with her brother, she decides to take one with her sister-in-law. Tiss is also excited to join them, claiming that she is a bath critic. In the bath, Rudy asks Rit how close she is to Red, and she replies that they have done everything except baby making. Rit is curious about Red's childhood too, and Rudy tells him that he was always a wonderful person and looked after her. She starts a story about their childhood, when she had not leveled up her blessing and was still weak. One day, she went out looking for her lost friend, since she was still the hero. Rudy found her in front of a cave, but as she tried to save her, an owlbear attacked them. As a hero, she prioritized her friend's life over her own and got severely injured while fighting. She healed herself and fought back, stabbing the owl bear's eye. However, she got smacked to the ground, and her friend ran away. As Rudy struggled to get back up, she realized there was no chance to win, and she desperately cried out to her brother for help. Just as the owlbear was about to attack her, Red arrived and slashed the beast in half. He hugged Rudy and told her that everything was fine now. Now, Rudy tells Rit that her blessing makes her emotions numb. She cannot enjoy anything in the present, and how she felt about things in the past is her only guideline to staying sane. She admits to being jealous of Red and Lagervia because she could freely convey her emotions and was even getting closer to Red. Rudy starts to cry, saying that she did not want to be the hero, but rather someone like Rit. Tiss was hearing the entire conversation, and she realizes that up until now, only Red could save the hero, 
but from now on, she swears to stay by her side and save her from the burden of her duty as her friend. The next day, Tiss visits Red and Rit by herself, and they thank her for being Rudy's friend. However, she is here to rat her out about using the devil's blessings. Red is stunned that the demon Belial approached her himself and turned her into a junkie. He believes that while her hero's blessing gives her immunity to all kinds of poisons, if the drug weakens her blessing, the side effects may arise soon. Tiss has also told them that they were the ones who broke Heisenberg out of prison, and she asks Red if he is angry at his sister for doing that. He wishes to forgive her this time since no one was hurt, and Tiss is happy to hear that. She requests that he tell this to Rudy too, since she is probably afraid of him being angry at her. Tiss requests that Red buy some alchemy equipment for Heisenberg's lab while she takes Rit with her to the hideout. Meanwhile, Ares and others have also reached Zoltan, and they scour the city for any leads on the runaway hero. They have an invisibility spell on themselves to sneak around, but the demon Shisenden, disguised as the adventurer Bui, still notices their presence. On the other hand, Red is out shopping for alchemy equipment when Danan greets him, and he is missing an arm. They catch up about what happened after he left the party, but do not notice Theodora and Albert sitting near them, shielded by the invisibility spell. Danan asks Red why he left the party, and he replies that he was a liability to the party in battle. Danan does not agree with him and tells him that he is a formidable warrior who can keep calm even when facing much stronger enemies. He wants Red to return to the party, but gets turned down like everyone before him. Red then tells Danan that Rudy is also in the town and how she suffers mentally and emotionally because of her blessing. Danan has room temperature IQ, but at least he realizes that for a fact, unlike many of my friends, he does not understand the complications of Rudy's blessing and decides that he will try to help her in whatever way possible. Before he can make any hasty decisions, Red asks him to at least tell his story first. Danan tells him that they can talk while they walk and claims that losing his right arm is not that big of a thing. On the other hand, Ares is resting in an inn when Danan visits him, and this one has both his arms intact which means he is probably the fake one. The fake Danan tells Ares that Red has settled down with Rit here, and they even own a small pharmacy. Ares gets pissed off at this too, complaining that after he kicked Red out of the team, he actually decided to retire and get married to the woman he loved. He asks Danan to take him to Red's shop so that he can remove him from the hero's life once and for all, even if he has to use lethal force to do that. The fake Danan leads the crazy Ares to the pharmacy, where he thrashes down the shop to relieve his frustration. He breaks medicine vials and plant pots before entering their bedroom and slashing their bed. The fake Danan lets him do as he pleases, in fact, he enjoys his pathetic rage. On the other hand, Red and Danan are running back to his shop when Danan tells him that the demon general Shisenden is still alive. They fought earlier while he was looking for Red and Shisenden bit off his arm and threw him in the sea. Right now, he was wandering this area in the form of a human adventurer. Red finds it hard to believe that the demon could survive after Rudy pierced his heart, but Danan tells him to think about it later. Just then, a spirit dragon flies overhead, and they do not notice Ares and the fake Danan sitting on it. They are still suspicious of the dragon flying towards the elven ruins and decide to chase after it. Red runs as fast as he can and catches up with Rit and Tiss. He tells her that Danan is on his way too, and she apologizes because she met Danan earlier, but did not tell him about it. Red inquires if she noticed anything different about Danan back then, and Rit cannot put her finger on anything. Red realizes what was going on and tells the shocked Rit that Danan is missing his right arm, which was bitten off by Shisenden who miraculously survived getting stabbed in the heart. Also, Shisenden had the ability to transform into anyone he ate, so the fake Danan is probably him too. Rit feels regretful that she kept him a secret from Red and declares that if they run into Shisenden, she will kill him, and Red also promises to join her in the battle. After that, he rushes on ahead, following the dragon, and comes to the elven ruins. Red uses a magical glow stick to navigate the dark ruins and then jumps down a hole using his skill slow fall. As he explores the ruins, he finds a notice that reads Hero Administration Facility, and wonders what is going on. He reaches the room in which Heisenberg is being kept and asks him where Rudy is. He has no idea and even refuses to call her, so Red twists his arm, and Rudy comes rushing to save her drug dealer, but as she sees her brother, she drops her weapon. Red takes her for a private chat and tells her that he heard everything about Tiss. He doesn't scold his sister for doing drugs, instead, he claims to be working on medicines that curb the blessing's impulses for her. Rudy is astonished, and she asks him why he would do that when he has spent all his life protecting the world and helping everyone he could. 
Red replies that all he ever wanted was to protect her, and helping other people was just something that came along with it. He claims that it is fine for Rudy to decide her own path, and even if she wants to quit being a hero, he will support her. Rudy cannot believe him so suddenly and asks for reassurance, and he once again tells her that she has the right to decide her life. She gets emotional and leans on him, thanking him for always being by her side. Soon, Rit and Tiss also come to the ruins, and Tiss apologizes to Rudy for ratting her out. However, Rudy has already forgiven her, and she thanks her for bringing her brother here. Red wants to talk to Heisenberg about how he can get the hearts of Axe demons to make the medicine. But before that, Rudy tells him that Belial told her that the new blessing the drug granted the user was because of the lingering malice of the Axe demon. However, it did not affect her like that, and instead of the Axe Demon's blessing, a nameless blessing was emerging with her. Her new blessing gives her no skills or urges, and Red is perplexed upon hearing that. Even Heisenberg has never heard of such a thing before, but he believes that if the Axe Demon's blessing isn't awakened, Rudy will not get murderous fits because of the drug. Everyone is relieved that the situation doesn't look bad, but then Tiss warns them about something approaching them rapidly. A flood of giant creepy eyeballs come their way, and Red realizes it is a magic spell that gives the caster the location of anyone who comes in contact with the eyes. Rudy doesn't care for that, and she blasts the eyeballs with lightning magic and runs away. Red chases after her, instructing Rit to follow them while keeping Heisenberg safe. Rudy has located the magic caster and runs towards him but she is stunned to find Ares waiting for her. He has gone completely crazy, and it seems like he badly needs to be sent to a mental asylum. He asks Rudy to come with him, as they can defeat the demon lord just by themselves, and they don't need any other weakling by their side. Rudy tells him that she is going to quit being a hero, but Ares doesn't take no for an answer and believes that she was doing this to accommodate her loser brother. Red tries to explain the truth to him, but he uses a force attack on him and sends him crashing into the wall. Ares exclaims that now that he has gotten rid of the baggage, Rudy should be free to join him, but she is angry and stabs him. Rudy tells him that since her brother was not seriously injured, she was going to let him live, but she is not coming back with him in any circumstance. She goes to Red and heals him, and then leaves Ares bleeding on the floor. He gets even more deranged with each passing moment and shouts that even the hero is an idiot beyond saving. The fake Danan, or Shisenden, was watching this, and he transformed into Bui to approach Ares with a healing potion. Ares heals himself with magic and then tells Shisenden that he knows who he is because of his appraisal skill. Shisenden gets to the point and says that he does not want to fight with him and instead wishes to form a temporary alliance. He tells Ares that a relic of the first hero is hidden in these ruins, and if he gives it to Rudy, she will return to his side. As Shisenden leads Ares to the sword, he recalls his first meeting with Rudy, and how he already knew that she would be the savior of the world. He deeply respected the blessing of the hero and wanted to dedicate his life to helping Rudy save the world. Now, everything he worked so hard for has been taken away from him, and he is determined to get it back at all costs. On the other side, Red and Rudy join their group and tell them that Ares was here and he was planning to win Rudy over. Tiss is keeping tabs on him and notifies the group that Ares was heading to the basement with another person, who is trying to conceal his presence with magic. Rit suspects that the other person is Shisenden, and Red wants to confront Ares and alert him that he is being tricked by a demon. Heisenberg, who has no idea what is happening, asks anyone to explain things to him, but he gets no answer and has no choice but to follow the group as they head towards Ares. Meanwhile, Danan, Theodora, and Albert have also entered the ruins. Danan wants to find enemies and fight them right away, but Theodora tells him to be careful, as she needs him. Danan friend zones her immediately and runs off alone, breaking doors with his powerful punches. Meanwhile, Shisenden and Ares have reached the lowest level of the ruins, which looks like a high-tech lab. Suddenly, Danan breaks a window and jumps in before stealing a sword from a skeleton and throwing it towards Shisenden. He blocks it at the last moment, but his hands get numb because of the impact. Ares is surprised to see Danan without an arm, but he tells him to step aside so that he can finish his battle with the demon. Shisenden charges at him first, hoping to take advantage of Danan's disability, but he punches him with his left hand and sends him crashing. Danan tells Shisenden that since he took his dominant arm away, he trained with his left and became even more powerful. He launches a powerful punch at the demon and pins him against the wall before going nuts with punches and kicks. Shisenden cannot fight back, and he asks Ares for help. Ares wonders if he should attack Danan, who was a former comrade in arms and someone much stronger than him in close combat. 
However, his greed to get the previous hero's weapon compels him to attack Danan with a thundering spear. Danan dodges the attack, but the lighting still stuns him, and Shisenin stabs him with his sword, causing an explosion inside his guts. Danan is still standing after taking serious damage, and to defeat him for good, Shisenin transforms into his real self. He attacks Danan with his six sword technique, but he parries all the blows with just his left arm and breaks all his swords one by one. However, Shisenin was hiding a blade beneath his feet and stabbed Danan with it, who accepted his defeat and lost consciousness. Ares feels nothing about seeing his former teammate being defeated, because this is not the first time he has betrayed anyone. He had planned to ambush Red when they crossed the bewitching woods because he knew how strong he was. That was exactly why Ares wanted to get rid of him, since with Red around, he could not take credit for being the hero's right arm. Shisenden thanks Ares for saving him, and he picks up the sword Danan threw at him as they start moving towards their goal. They come to a locked door, and Shisenden uses a heart-shaped diamond to override its lock mechanism and force it to open. As they reach the core room of the facility, Ares is stunned to find it has technology much more advanced than their time. However, his disbelief increases even more as Shisenden opens a locker, revealing five identical swords and one similar sword missing from the set. The sword was the holy demon slayer wielded by the hero Rudy. He cannot believe that there are six of those swords when all the texts say that it was one of a kind. However, Shisenden tells him that none of these swords are holy demon slayer, and even the one with Rudy is a fake. He says that the swords are mere replicas of the divine swords used by the first hero, and even the soul of the current hero is but a copy of the first hero's soul. Shisenden tells Ares that there are two things he must do to return Rudy to the path of being a hero. First, he should give her one of these five swords that will strengthen her hero's blessing and cleanse the effects of the drug. The second thing is taking away whatever reason she has for quitting to be a hero. Ares immediately thinks of eliminating Red, and as the demon hands him over one sword, he laughs like a maniac. Red and his group have reached a courtyard with three doors, and they sense Shisenden near them. Rudy takes out Red's sword, Thunder Waker, from her item box and returns it to him. Soon, a door opens, and Shisenden comes out of it in the form of Rit's teacher. She is furious and attacks him without wasting a moment but she finds that she just sliced an illusion. The real Shisenden was hiding with an invisibility spell nearby, and she blocked his attack somehow. Red rushes in to support her, but as they are facing the demon, Ares suddenly attacks them with fire magic. Red and Rit dodge the attack, and Rudy puts a magic shield around them to protect them from the fire. She tells Ares that he can still be forgiven if he stops right now, but he tells her that it is too late for that. Ares and Rudy attack each other with lightning-type magic attacks, and their attacks are equally matched. They draw their swords, and Ares hopes to just touch his sword to Rudy. However, she creates a powerful whirlwind just by swishing her sword around, and it pushes Ares and Shisenden back. The sword Ares had is destroyed, and Shisenden realizes that Rudy's powers were already stronger than those of the previous hero. Just then, Tis senses something coming from the ground, and as Red and Rit try to dodge it, the floor breaks, and Theodora comes out riding a dragon. She attacks Rit without a warning and restrains her with spiritual chains. Theodora then attacks Rudy, who blocks her attack and asks her why she is doing this. Theodora replies that she must kill the hero right now to save the world, and Rudy replies that she never wanted to be a hero, and was basically forced into this job. Theodora attacks her again, and she marginally overwhelms Rudy, while claiming that because of her neglect of duty, countless people suffer, and she will kill her so a new hero can be born. On the other hand, Theodora's dragon steps on Rit, and Red is torn between saving his sister and his lover. Rit squirms and frees herself from the dragon's claw to call out Theodora's bullshit. She says that people are more than just their blessings, and Rudy cannot be expected to just be the hero, and nothing else. Theodora says that people must live according to their blessings, as it is God's wish, and Rit replies that God is wrong. Even Shisenden agrees with her on this, and he adds that just because someone has the blessing of a hero, that person does not become worthy of saving the world. Red notices that the dragon is about to attack Rit, and he rushes to save her by slaying it. However, Ares takes advantage of this chance and throws a giant metallic cube at them, tossing them into a broken elevator, and they go down. Rudy panics at seeing her brother get attacked and rushes to face him. Theodora stands in her way, but she simply slashes her away before running into Shisenden. 
he attacks her, and her holy sword breaks while blocking his blow. The ground under their feet collapses, and they too fall down. Now, Ares feels that he is finally only one step away from achieving his goal. He laughs, saying that now Red is dead and he is alive, which means Rudy will have no choice but to come with him. He notices Tiss standing behind him and attacks her with a mini tornado, just because he feels like it. Tiss struggles to get up and declares that a crazy man like him cannot be entrusted with the hero. She talks about how Rudy is just an ordinary girl on the inside and how she will protect her friend at all costs, but then proceeds to collapse. Ares laughs like the mad villain he is, and this pisses off Heisenberg. He throws a smoke bomb and lashes out at Ares for not even realizing that he is the bad guy here, and Ares immediately shoots him down. Tiss's pet spider comes ahead to defend her from the crazy magician, but he just stomps on it. On the other hand, Red and Rit are free to fall along with the elevator, but they do not know that Danan is below them. He has somehow recovered from his injuries and knows that while everyone else is thinking complex thoughts, he must do what he can to save all his friends. He notices the elevator and uses a powerful martial arts technique to create a storm that shatters the elevator and lifts Red and Rit up. They come out on the floor where Ares is, and he loses it over the fact that he failed once again. He attacks them with a giant lightning spear, and Red charges ahead towards him, with Rit buffing him up with magic. He endures the lightning, but Rit takes the full damage. Ares is confident that he can kill Red with his own hands now, but as he tries to cast his spell, he finds that his hand has been tied down by the spider's silk. He realizes he cannot do anything, and Red attacks him, literally unarming him with one swift slash before striking him down. Ares screams for help, asking Shisandan to restore his hands so that he can use magic, but there is no one coming to help him now. In his final moments, he realizes that despite swearing to serve the hero, he only hurt her and then dies while regretting his decisions. On the other hand, Rudy is in the basement, facing Shisandan, who declares that she is a threat to the order of this world and swears to eliminate her. He covers his swords in a magical aura and attacks Rudy, but she is able to fend him off just with her broken sword. She declares that she just wants to live like a normal girl with her brother, but Shisenden tells her that she must sacrifice everything to become the hero. Rudy is taking none of his nonsense and declares that she is full of rage right now. Shisenden realizes that she is brimming with power, and he cannot even hope to stand against her right now. Rudy charges at him and punches him with her full might, and Shisenden blocks her attack with his swords. Rudy's punch shatters them all and sends him flying at supersonic speed. She then rushes to the sword Shisenden had dropped earlier earlier, and picks it up to finish him for good. As Shisenden is getting shredded to pieces, he smiles, thinking that he made the hero pick up the sword, and this means her blessing is going to get much stronger and gain complete control over her. Just as Rudy finishes him off, she suddenly becomes a cold murder machine once again. On the higher floor, Red treats the injured Theodora since he still considers her a friend, even after she attacked them earlier. Soon, Rudy comes out after finishing her battle, and she looks quite gloomy. Red approaches her, but he realizes that something is wrong. However, it is too late for that, and Rudy attacks him. But Tiss comes in between them and takes the blow on her body. She tells the hero that she should not harm her dear brother, and then passes out. Red is shocked and realizes that his sister is not in control of herself. Red tells Rit and Heisenberg to tend to Tiss while he distracts Rudy. She follows him as he steps aside and starts attacking him again. Red blocks her blows and tries to wake her up, but she does not respond and keeps on pushing him back. Red's sword is cracked, and he rests it down and draws his bronze sword instead. Rudy rushes towards him again, and he uses his bronze sword to intercept her attack and trap her sword. Red twists her hand to disarm her, and Rudy finally snaps out of her trance. She starts crying as she realizes what she just did and clings to Red, and he comforts her. Danan and Albert come to the floor after all the action is over, and their loud voice wakes Theodora. Rit says that her powers are not strong enough to heal Tiss's wound, and Rudy wipes her tears as she rushes to help her friend. However, she soon learns that she cannot channel the power her blessing gives her. She starts crying again, saying that the blessing that always urged her to fight when she did not want to is refusing to give her power when she truly wants to save someone. Theodora steps up and uses her power to heal Tiss, and then she tells Rudy that she will not apologize to her since she believed her way was right. She states that after Red left their party, there was only one reason Rudy's blessing didn't urge her to bring him back. Theodora believes that Rudy had become too strong, and she did not need a party then. All the people with her were just slowing her down. 
With her resistance to basic biological needs, Rudy could march on ahead alone and defeat the Demon Lord by herself if necessary. Theodora claims that she realizes that to be a hero was a lonely and cruel thing, yet she wanted to push Rudy onwards so that she could fulfill her role. She admits that it was a great sin to betray the hero and her friend, so she requests Rudy to strike her down. However, Albert has started simping for Theodora, and he advocates that while her actions may be excessive, she only did what she thought was the best for humanity. He says that the path to saving the world as a hero was much more grim than he thought it would be, and it is normal for people to be torn between opposing thoughts. However, Theodora had the determination to follow her ideals to the end, and that makes her a hero. Albert begs everyone to spare her life. Before anyone can comment on his request, Tiss wakes up, and Rudy is glad to see that she is fine. She tells Theodora that she does not want any more bloodshed today, and declares that she will live as Rudy from now, and not as the hero. Rudy claims that she always believed Theodora was more worthy of being called a hero, as she has been fighting to save the world long before her. Red chimes in, stating that just strength does not make one a hero, and it was the desire to save the world that counts. Theodora is happy to hear that and decides to embark on her journey to defeat the Demon Lord with like-minded companions, rather than forcing the job on someone unwilling. Soon, everyone else settles down into a peaceful life, and Rudy and Tiss move to Zoltan permanently. They visit Red's shop one day, and it starts to snow. Rudy is no longer protected by her blessing, and she can finally feel what cold weather feels like. Rit tells her to come inside as she will catch a cold, and Rudy replies that she has never had one before, so she is looking forward to her first cold. She starts sneezing immediately, and Red drapes his coat around her as he leads her in. They sit down for breakfast, and Rudy can fully enjoy the taste of pizza now. The new blessing she received after doing drugs was named New Truth. It has a powerful skill called the Ruler which can dominate and control other blessings. Using that skill, she is able to subdue her hero's blessing without using the devil's blessing. In the evening, the local priest holds a service for Ares, and only his former party members attend it. According to the church, whenever a person is reborn, they get a different blessing from the last time and Red wishes that Ares is free from the burden of being a saint in his next life. After the funeral, Danon tells his friends that he will leave soon to join Theodora and Albert to fight the Demon Lord. Before that, he wants to know if Red has any idea as to how Shisenden could hold the Holy Swords meant to kill the Demon Lord. There is also the question of why there were six identical swords, and Tis suggests that the number matched the arms of Asura demons like Shisenden. Before things get too confusing, Red tells Rudy and others to stop thinking about it, as it was Theodora's job to figure things out now. After that, Red returns home to Rit, who has been feeling anxious and insecure for the past few days. She believes that everyone needs Red and his blessing to guide them to the correct path, and someday he might leave her to guide someone else in need. However, Red tells her that there is no one more important to him than her and hugs her, promising that they are going to live together forever and enjoy their slow lives. Red and Rit achieve their happily ever after and live a blissful married life. Rudy has also become a perfectly normal girl now, and she works as the newbie rank adventurer for Zoltan while helping out her brother too. The three of them and Tiss live like a big happy family, enjoying their slow life and handing out help to whoever comes asking for it. 